Today, we'll squirt the crate Camaro, stripe on some war paint, finally flog the El Camino. Well, almost. Trash him. No way. Oh, my God. Hey, guys, welcome to Muscle Car. Jared said that he was going to bring some car by, some show car or something. I don't know. I can't see in this. Let's get in. Hey! Oh, man! This thing is so cool! It's bad, isn't it? Jeez! Hey, guys, today we were painting that crate Camaro. And for inspiration, we brought by a special guest. It's a 37 Ford Cabrio. It's one of the latest creations out of Rad Rides by Troy. This thing took top paint honors at SEMA. I was one of the lucky guys who got to put about 9,000 man hours into this thing. Now, granted, this isn't a true muscle car in that term, but that's okay, because this baby makes 600 horse. The attention to detail on this thing is just out of this world, and that's why it's in here today. It's typical Troy, an all steel body with one off billet specialty wheels, a fabricated grill, totally custom interior, a handmade dash with a trick door that hides the head unit, and killer graphics by Bob Thrash. It's getting me inspired to get back on our crate Camaro. Okay, our Camaro is going to receive a complete paint job. That means we got to get paint in the door jams and on the back sides of the panels, too. So we're going to go ahead and take the doors off, the hood, and the trunk and get them in the paint booth. You always want to make sure you have your station set up so when you walk into wherever you're going to paint your panels, you can hang them right up. You're not taking the chance on messing anything up. We're drilling holes in the hinges so that the panel will go back on easier. What we like to do is put tape on here. It keeps the drill bit from going too far in. These holes are a good reference point for rehanging the panel back in the same place. Alrighty then. Man, there isn't anything I love more than taking out bolts. But you love taking out bolts? Love it. I know. <coughs> Even Santiago to point out all the little stuff. What I do. Don't worry. Tonight, <laughs> after the show, we'll be in here fixing all that. <laughs> Use racks to keep the panels off the floor and add a good work height. What we're going to do is we're going to scotch bright the inside of the door jams. This way, we got a nice, clean mechanical adhesion point for the paint. So all of this is going to be cleaned out and scotch bright. We're going to get rid of this mud, so we got a nice, clean edge. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to take out the door latch so we don't get overspray in it. Next, we wipe down each panel with solvent to get it ready to tape. As you can see, I let my hair grow this morning and it's just totally unmanageable. So it just lays there when I try to blow dry it today. I like to use a really sharp razor to go around corners like this. It's a lot easier than trying to bend the tape around the corner and then I can just get a nice sharp edge. This reverse taping is the second time we're taping the car. Keep it off the trunk too and I'll go uh... The next step, we're gonna blow some white sealer on the door jam and the panel surface. We want complete coverage over the primer with minimal buildup. The sealer will get 30 minutes to dry and then we'll blow on some color. PPG was cool enough to give us their paint chip book, so we're gonna go with Porsche Guard Red, and I can't say it, so I'm gonna call it Crystal Ball Silver. Pretty cool colors. It's gonna be a breeze to mix up because we also got a computer from them and an entire mixing bank. So we can mix this color anytime exactly the right way. A digital scale maintains accuracy. When you add everything together, pow, you get Porsche Guard Red. Perfect. Outstanding pour. You've been practicing, haven't you? Oh, absolutely. To keep everything together, you can see some of the color swirled in there. I'll pour my reducer in the same cup to make sure that everything that was in my formula gets in the same can. Take your time stirring to get everything mixed thoroughly. 
a quick pattern test, and it's ready for the boot. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. Write down your times between coats, so each one chemically fuses to the previous one. 15 minutes between them will give you a good lock. Coming up, it's clear coat time for the panels and jams. Hello? Yes. Can you get me a mixing stick, please? Yes, I can. The next step, mix up some clear to do the jams and inner panels. We'll add a little thinner, then a Scotia hardener. It's back to the booth to clear the inner panels and the door jams. Reds are usually more expensive because the pigment's harder to get than in other primary colors. Mmm, I am liking this red. Well, it doesn't get much redder than that. All right. Let's see what we got here. Lovely. Let's get some tape off this pig and get panels on it. With the jams painted, the paper comes off carefully. When you unmask a car, always peel the tape back away from the paint like this. Take your time so you don't create any loose edges. Oh yeah, you're cool. At least doing it this way saves so much guesswork, you know? Oh, yeah. Does it look good? Like it's not gonna hit at least? No, it's not gonna hit. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shut it hard then. Ready? Go ahead. You're good. Next, it's masking tips with foam. 
Later, it's launch time for the El Camino. Hit it, maestro. What we did was we put all the panels back on and lined them all right back up. That's where the guide holes come in. We're going to put two silver stripes that come down and then go up the hood. This way, all we got to do is lay them out. When they're done, clear it, done. Pow! When taping up a door jam that you've already painted, it's nice to use this 3M foam tape because it creates a good soft edge that the paint can blow up against. And we'll tape off the interior yet again. Using this ruler to push it back under the fender, get it just right where I want it. Shape the foam so it exposes the edge of the jam coat to the next coat. Hey guys, we put a ton of time into this thing and I'm finally ready to paint it, so I'm not gonna waste another minute. Power on. probably wondering why Jared's putting white sealer on the crate Camaro. The reason is, you put white sealer under that red paint, BAM! It's like waking it up. It's so cool. Using white sealer is like putting a light under the red. Remember, keep the gun about eight inches from the surface. Oh man, that is a red, red. I'm dragging Lou in here to help me check for any uneven spots. I've been staring at this thing for so long that he might see something I don't. This side looks good. Yeah, I think it's good. Well, the next step's gonna be stripes, so. We'll get to it. Good job, Grasshopper. Well, thank you. Hey guys, welcome back, man. We're gonna bam up this red a little bit with some silver stripes. Now, when we taped up the car, you saw us use that green tape. Now, we're gonna use blue to do all the stripe work, and that's because this blue tape has low adhesion. It won't pull off your fresh paint. And this fine line has like a plastic property, so it leaves a really crisp edge. I think it should go the length of the hood and, you know, die up here. Works for me, man. Always use a razor when you cut this fine line. Otherwise, it's going to stretch and bunch up. If you use the razor to cut it, it'll stay straight. <laughs> All right, cut this. Arr. I should be a sturgeon, by the way, I handle that knife. Sturgeon? A sturgeon. <laughs> I walk around the shop and I find anything that I like, the circumference of, for a radius. And then I'll use this as my template for making the curved parts of the line. You always want to make sure the edge of that tape's really stuck down good, because if you don't, you're going to get overspray underneath it, and your, tape, your stripe won't look as crisp. Thing you want to write down, what air pressure you shoot your metallics at, it's very important because that's going to dictate how those grains lay out. I'm thinking something in a silver for the back here, you know? This is something that's very important. Really take your time on this step. If you get into striping or anything like that, just take it easy. Because nice. five minutes here will save you eight hours down the road. Nice and slow, see? That's the way to do it.
In NASCAR, they'd call it turn two. <laughs> Whoa, you wanna go there? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, oh! Ah! I'm getting pumped, I'm getting fired up, I'm happy. That's a happy dance. Time to put the icing on the cake. It's clear coat time. The thing that's really cool about this paint job is that the stripes will be under the clear. Everything will be at one level that way. Just blow people away. We've been sniffing paint fumes for entirely too long, so we're gonna go get some fresh air and finally beat the hell out of that El Camino. And while we're doing that, you guys take a look at this fashionable Camaro behind us. It's B.A.D. Oh yeah, we're gonna tear these babies up. <laughs> yeah, our El Camino's got more than enough power to shred those. When we get back, eventually we're gonna be putting on these bridge stones. This is Bridgestone's latest Potenza. It's the pole position. It's gonna be just what we need when we're doing those hard launches and high-speed highway runs. Let's go, you're driving. Oh, you don't have to tell me that twice. Well, the time has come for us to beat the snot out of our El Camino. Hit it, maestro. Nope, ain't drive shaft. Rear end. You broke it, you rolling the tire. Let's go, man. Later, guys. Later. You're replacing the rear end. I ain't doing it. Told you it was gonna break. Hey, man, give us a ride. Hey. <laughs> oh, see, come on. No. 